I'm Dr. Eric Cohen. I want to uh, talk a little bit about uh, coronary angiogram for information of patients who might undergo this procedure. First of all, a uh, coronary angiogram is a type of x-ray uh, picture of the arteries of the heart. You can see on our model of the heart right here that uh, <coughs> these red lines are the arteries, are the tubes that take blood to the heart muscle itself. And uh, as you probably know, these are prone to getting narrowed or blocked and the angiogram is about looking for those narrowings and blockages. What we do in an angiogram is insert a tube through an artery in the wrist or sometimes at the top of the leg, thread it up to the heart, and then inject x-ray dye into these arteries here. The uh, x-ray dye then outlines for us where the arteries are blocked. And based on what we find on that, uh, those pictures, we then decide what, uh, together with, with patient, of course, what the best treatment might be. And various treatments include medications alone, sometimes bypass surgery, and sometimes the balloon procedure with the stent, which we call angioplasty, or these days we call it PCI. How are you doing? Good, thank you. Good. Okay. On the uh, day that we do the procedure, many patients come from home that morning, and uh, if we're just doing uh, the angiogram procedure, they usually go home the same day. It's, uh, it's an outpatient procedure often home within a few hours. Uh, we usually ask you to uh, not have anything to eat in the morning if uh, your procedure is scheduled early in the day, and if it's scheduled later, you can have a light breakfast before showing up. So here you see Mr. Nazim coming into the procedure room. He's being uh, led to the uh, procedure table. Uh, the nurses will do some prep of the skin on the uh, hand and at the top of the leg. Uh, and then we uh, usually insert some local anesthetic, a very small amount, a little bit of discomfort with that, but once it's numbed up, uh, usually don't feel anything else. Uh, and you are awake during this procedure. We uh, often use some mild sedation, so you're a bit relaxed, but uh, we do not need a general anesthetic. You don't need to be asleep for this. In fact, many patients can watch on the uh, monitor exactly what's going on. And following this, we uh, proceed to insert uh, what we call an introducer tube. The introducer tube is in place now. We advance the catheters towards the heart, and we are guided by the x-ray during this. Uh, you can see the people in the room wear x-ray protection in the form of a lead apron, and there are x-ray shields. Uh, this is mainly to protect the staff who are exposed to the x-rays constantly in their job. Here you can see uh, we are actually injecting the x-ray dye and taking the pictures, and the images are shown in real time on the monitor. We're observing the monitor. We take multiple pictures from different angles. That's why you see the camera being moved around to different uh, projections. Once we've seen the images, sometimes we will proceed with the angioplasty procedure, that's the balloon and stent, right then and there at the same time. Uh, in other situations, it requires further discussion, thinking about it, uh, and as I said before, possibly other types of treatment. After the procedure, uh, you're taken off the uh, procedure table, uh, wheeled back to the room, usually on a stretcher, sometimes in a wheelchair, uh, and then we usually keep an eye on things and observe uh, for three to four hours, sometimes a bit less uh, if it's an uncomplicated procedure. And as I said, you go home the same day. We always ask you to take it easy that evening when you go home. But one of the advantages of this kind of procedure is you can get back to your usual activities uh, very quickly. If we do the angioplasty procedure either at the same time or even if you come back for it on a separate day, that takes a bit longer for the procedure itself and that depends on how complex uh, your particular arteries and situation might be. We've completed taking the pictures and we're reviewing them now and discussing with Mr. Nazim what the best treatment option would be. Uh, but, uh at least one, but maybe two stents there, uh, and that will probably make your chest discomfort feel better. And in this case, uh, we all felt that an attempt to open that narrowed artery right, uh, right away would be the best uh, treatment option. So we're getting set up at this point uh, to proceed with what we call an angioplasty or a stent procedure. We've started working on the angioplasty at this point. We use a very fine guide wire. Uh, which uh, is threaded through the narrowed area of the artery, and then we insert a small balloon. Everything is very small here. The arteries themselves are only two or three millimeters in diameter. And we insert the balloon, and then we inflate it to stretch the artery a bit. That makes room to bring the stent in, and in this case, required more than one stent to fully open the uh, narrowed portion of the artery. 
At this point, we're complete. We've completed the procedure. The uh, stents are in place, and uh, it uh, might be quite obvious from the images that the artery is now wide open, where it was severely narrowed before. At this point, uh, we just have to remove the tube, the introducer sheath, from the wrist. And we apply pressure over the site uh, until the bleeding would stop. And you can see that there really is very little blood loss, and the only incision made is about a quarter of an inch in length. So you want to see the picture before and after? Yeah. See, it's almost completely blocked. <laughs> yes. There's no blood getting through. And afterwards, it's wide open. Lots of blood getting through. Okay? So that's, uh, that's called the right coronary artery. The bottom, it's the right and bottom part of your heart. And the whole bottom part of your heart was not getting very much blood supply. So I think your angina is going to feel better. Once we're all done with uh, removing all the equipment, uh, the patient is taken off the procedure table. He's getting back onto a uh, stretcher here and will be returned to what we call the short stay unit. Uh, and uh, he may go home later in the same day or uh, in this case because it was later in the day already he'll probably stay overnight and go home the following morning. We usually uh, arrange or ask that you arrange follow-up with your own cardiologist who might be someone here at Sunnybrook or might be somewhere else. Uh, we make sure that you have all the information about prescriptions because some of the medications after these procedures are quite important.